Hey everyone, Nick Moore here, and welcome to my second sound design tutorial. Today I'll be going over three growl synths I created in Massive using FL Studio for my recreation of Skrillex's Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. Since I have ads on this video, I can't play the original, but you can listen to it using the link below, or you can listen to my FL Studio recreation as well. I also just wanted to quickly say thanks to all my subscribers for liking and commenting on my videos, and that I'm proud to say I just hit 500,000 total plays. Anyway, first I'm going to let you hear each synth, and then we'll start the lesson. Okay, we're going to cover growl one now. This is the main growl from Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. Uh, it's my recreation, obviously. It's not going to sound exactly the same. But I don't have the same synth that Skrillex used for that. He used FM8, supposedly. And I don't have FM8, so I used Massive. Anyway, what you're going to first want to do is open uh, a new instance of Massive. So if you don't already know how to do that, or you haven't already done that, right click and go to Insert and Massive. I'm not going to do it since I already have in this case. Uh, next, you want to go to File, New Sound, just to make sure that everything's set to default and massive. After you've done that, we're going to put the notes in there. And they are as follows. It goes from D sharp 4 down to G2. And you'll notice I have one starting early and ending early, and one starting late and ending late. They're both within two bars, but the reason I have it like that is so that it slides from the top note to the bottom note. And I'll show you how to set up Massive to do that uh, shortly here. So now that you have the notes set up and Massive set to a default state, this is what it should sound like. Pretty bad, right? But that's just because we haven't done anything yet, really. All right, now we're going to go to setting up the effects. So. Make sure you have your massive set to uh, a channel with nothing on it. So in my case, that would be 30, although I have mine set up for this tutorial, of course. But make sure you set up a channel and have nothing on it except for what I tell you to add. So with your new channel, you're going to want to add these three things. First, the Fruity Parametric EQ2, which is an equalizer. Second, something called the Wow Filter, which is a third-party plugin that does not come with FL Studio by a company called Sugarbytes. And then third is Fruity Flingus. So to go into detail, uh, with the first one, it's an equalizer. And these are the settings I have for mine. Yours don't need to be really exactly the same or even really close at all, honestly. They could be flat and it would probably still sound pretty similar. But I made like uh, mine like this just for this tutorial so that I could get a sound I wanted, you know, uh, just quickly and easily. The second one is the Wow Filter. Again, like I said, this is a third-party plugin by a company called Sugarbytes. I've I've provided the link for it below this video, so feel free to visit the site and purchase it if you do want this plugin and you don't already have it. But basically, what it lets you do is um, add vowels to sounds, and you can do this without this plugin. But it, this plugin makes it way way easier. Um, that's why I like it so much. So anyway, once you have this loaded, you want to go to presets and click the drop down and go to vowel and change it to number 13, the vowel comb. And when you get to that, the first thing you're going to want to do down here under modulators is click the reset all button. Uh, just because the vowel filter has automatic automation between the vowels going already that's not in sync with the song. We don't want that. We're going to set up the automation ourselves. So click reset all and then change your settings to match mine. So overdrive should be right about 30. Val A should be U, and Val B should be an O with the dots above it. And by the way, if you don't know how to change the vowels, you just left click and drag up and down on them. Um, and then the re uh, resonance should be around 90 to 100, probably a little bit less, around 90, I'd say. And then the mix should be at 50, and the master should be at 100. Don't worry about what you have set under modulators. That's not relevant to what we're doing here. So that covers the wow filter settings. And then the last one, the Flangus. Again, this is a free plugin that comes with FL Studio. Uh, just keep it on the default settings when you load it. The only thing different I did is I changed the volume of it to 50% instead of 100%. Uh, 
because I don't like the way it sounds when it's fully uh, at 100%. So now that we have the effects added, what we want to do now is set up the vowel automation. So go back to your effects and click the wow filter. And then see this little arrow on the top left area that points down? You want to click that and go to browse perimeters. Now over here on the left, if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see all the perimeters that are part of the wow filter. Um, so now when we, wanna, we want it to tell us which perimeter is for the vowel cutoff right here, which it is pretty obvious in this plugin, but usually it's not obvious in plugins. You just have to left click on a knob you want to modulate, and you'll see FL Studio has changed. It has highlighted the, the perimeter over here. So now we just right click on the perimeter and go to Edit Events, and then close that out right away afterwards. Uh, all, all I do that for is just to basically tell FL Studio, hey, I want to modify this perimeter of this third-party plugin. Um, now, after that, you want to open up the piano row of where the notes we put in earlier and right-click below all the notes and go down to the bottom of the list. There should be something under pattern controls that says wow vowel cutoff. Click that and now we can modulate and automate the vowel cutoff of the wow filter. As you can see, I've already done it for myself, but for you, you would just go to the top left corner and right click and hold it down and drag to the bottom right corner and let go. And now that will automate the vowel via FL Studio instead of the plugin itself doing it. So now if I loop it and play it with the vowel, uh, the vowel filter open, I should see it automating. Yep, so it is working. It still sounds bad because we're not sliding the notes yet in Massive, but we will do that now. So open up Massive. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to voicing, the tab voicing here, and change it from polyphonic to monophonic. That will immediately set it to slide. So now when you listen to it, sounds much better. And that's even with the default settings of Massive. Uh, second thing you want to do is click the oscillator tab here and change the time to a little bit longer. Um, just enough so that you know it doesn't slide down immediately. To me, that sounds a lot better now that it has time to slide down the notes. Okay, so now that we've got the sliding enabled, we got the, uh, the vowel automation enabled, and we have all the settings applied, we're going to start building the actual synth. So in Massive, make sure you disable anything we don't need. So we don't need the noise, so turn that off. We don't need the filter, either one. And we don't need FX1 and 2. Even though there's nothing in them, it's better just to turn them off so we don't forget about it you know, and do something later. Anyway, go to oscillator 1 and make sure it's enabled, and then change the first sound to silver, which is under digital hybrid. Next, you want to change it from spectrum to bend minus, and then change the WT position or wavetable position to uh, about 10 o'clock or so. Intensity can stay the same, and the amp stays the same, and that covers the first oscillator. Now enable the second oscillator and change the sound from the square saw to carbon. It's under analog electric at the very bottom. Also change this from spectrum to bend minus. Now change the wavetable position on this one to about 9 o'clock. Maybe a little bit past it, honestly. Intensity needs to be at about 10.30 or 11 o'clock maybe a little bit less, and that will cover the second oscillator. Now enable the third oscillator and change this to Wicked. Wicked is under Digital Hybrid, almost at the very bottom. This one can stay as Spectrum, however you do want to change the pitch to negative 12 instead of 0. Now change the wavetable position to about 2 or 3 o'clock. The intensity can stay the same and the amp can stay the same, and that covers the last uh, oscillator. Now you want to turn on the modulation oscillator and click phase under mode and click number two for the oscillator number two. That'll just slightly phase oscillator number two. And now that covers all the oscillators. We're going to turn on the EQ built in the massive and turn up the high shelf a little bit and the boost a little bit. This is all subjective and just depending on your mix, but I'm doing this for this tutorial basically. Uh, just brings it out, makes it a little brighter sounding. And now we have everything set up. So here's what it sounds like now that I've just created the oscillators. 
already sounds kind of cool, but it needs a little bit more. So now what I'm going to do is automate a lot of these knobs so that they change automatically. So click number five LFO and where it says sync, check that off and change the ratio from 116 to 12. And then move this little waveform over to the right slightly. Now go to the 8 LFO and don't change anything except for the rate, just change it down a little bit. All right, now what we're going to do is start tying these to the knobs. And that way these LFOs are going to move the knobs for us. So take the arrow on number 5 LFO and click it and drag it down to the first box under the wavetable position for silver, the first oscillator. Now left click it and drag all the way up until the green reaches all the way around the right side. Now for intensity, you want to take the number 8 LFO, put it in the first slot on that one, and left click and drag down a little bit, uh, a little bit past 3 o'clock, I'd say like 2.30 or something like that. Now take the 8 LFO again and drag it to carbon, uh, the first wavetable position in carbon. Left click and drag up to about 12.30 on the timing. Leave the intensity alone for now on that one and we're done with that. And for oscillator 3, take number 5 LFO again, click and drag it to the first box on the wavetable position, and left click and drag to the right all the way down. Now we have all three oscillators that are, are being modulated automatically. So that's roughly what it sounds like. It could be definitely be fine-tuned, and I, I bet it's overgaining in several areas, but this is the basic sound that I use to create these sounds for that uh, the recreation. So there's the first one. If it doesn't sound exactly the same for you, it's most likely because you're in the wrong octave in the notes. I had this problem in my other tutorial. Just make sure that you're in a low octave. If you play the sound in a high one, it sounds awful. Here's a high one. And here's a low one and together. Obviously it sounds way better when it slides because that's what I designed it, you know, it's what I primarily designed the sound for. But that's the first one. Now we're going to cover the second growl. Um, this is the one that comes right after the initial first drop growl. It's based off the same thing, but when I was making this I realized I had to layer three of them together to make it sound as dynamic you know, at least somewhat close as, as dynamic as the one that it does in Skrillex's song. Uh, once again, he uses FM8 and I'm using Massive, so it does not sound the same, but I was trying to mimic kind of like the the actual audio uh, techniques of it. I don't really know how to explain it. I guess the characteristics is the way I'm trying to explain it. I'm, I was trying to replicate the characteristics of it. So anyway, it's the same thing with these as in the first growl. Whereas um, you got to have you know the wow filter set up for them, and I have all three of these set up on a different channel. So I have growl one here on channel 34, then I have growl two here on channel 38, and then growl three on channel 35. The reason I did that is because each of them, each one of them has a, a, a wow filter assigned to them, but it's the same settings in general as the other one. Uh, obviously, I took down the I took down the flingus on these a little bit because the second part is a little more grittier and raw sounding, so I didn't really want to spread it via the stereo too much. But other than that, it's basically the same. Um, same settings and wow, you know, all that stuff is the same. <coughs> so we don't need to go over the effects again. Um, we do need to go over the automation for the wow filters, though. Uh, what I did is kind of made them slightly different than each other just so that you would hear the different parts of the synths coming through at different times. Uh, that was the best idea I could come up with to try to mimic Skrillex's growl at the time. So for instance if you look at the first one on channel 34 I'm gonna go to the valve cutoff on 34 that's my automation for the first growl on channel 34. Now this one is on channel 38, so I'm going to go down here to valve cutoff 38, and it's pretty similar. In fact, it might even be the same, but I changed the last one slightly. This one is on, let's see, 35. 
So if I go down here to 35, yeah, you can see I reduced the amount on this one, so it's not quite as much. And I changed the dynamics of the actual sound itself in Massive. So it's coming through at certain points and drowning out at other points, and it just basically makes them all sound kind of like they're all working together in a way. It's a little bit weird to explain, but it was the best I could come up with when I was doing this recreation. So anyway, we're going to start with Growl 1 and start building the sound. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, and thankfully you can, you can take note that these synths are a little bit less complicated than the first one we made. Since these are layered, uh, I didn't use all the oscillators and all of them. But anyway, uh, first thing to do again is disable the things we don't need. We don't need the filters, we don't need the noise, and we don't need the effects. So turn those all off. Now on oscillator 1, which is the only one we need, you need to enable that and change it to digital 2. Um, I always have trouble finding these when I'm looking fast. Yeah, that's it. So this one's under Digital Hybrid DigiCook 2. And it stays as Spectrum, but you do want to change the wavetable position. Um, I'd say like 930, maybe 9, give or take. The intensity stays in the staying spot. And we're not going to use the modulation oscillator in this. But we are going to use the LFOs. So go to the number 5 LFO. Turn on sync on this one again. Change it to 1, 2 instead of 1, 16. And then click, hold, or left click, hold, and drag it to the first part in the wavetable position. And then left click, drag up all the way around. And then number 8 is the same thing like we did last time. Just change the rate down a little bit. And then click and drag number 8 to intensity on the first oscillator. And click and drag and hold down just slightly just to change it a little bit. And then once again, we're going to turn on the EQ and turn on the high shelf and the boost a little bit. And that should be the first one. I don't want that metronome. <laughs> OK. All right, and that's the first sound. And of course, I might have to modify these, you know. <coughs> as I start laying them over together. So there's the first one for now. Okay, now for the second one, it's largely similar to the first one, but we change a few parameters just so that it kind of sounds like it's working with the other one. So once again, disable the things we don't need. We don't need these filters. We don't need these effects. We don't need the noise. And once again, oscillator 1 should be enabled and change it to Digi2, DigiCook2 under Digital Hybrid. And the white table position should be, once again, at about 9 o'clock or a little bit past. And we're doing the same thing with the LFOs. So turn on sync, change it to 1, 2. And basically what you could have done is just clone the other one. Um, I'm just trying to go through these you know, with my thought process, I guess. <coughs> but anyway, the only difference with this one is with this number 5 LFO, we're going to move the wave table over to about here so that it's starting off a little bit later after the first one. So that's what kind of gives it that kind of sound where it sounds like it's working together. And then once again, drag it to the wavetable position in the first oscillator. Left click, drag all the way up. And same thing with the intensity on the 8 LFO. Left click, drag down just a little bit. Should be good where it is. And now for the last growl. Okay, now for the last one, it's a little bit different. Once again, I'm sure you're used to this. Disable all the things that aren't necessary. We don't need the filters. We don't need the noise. We don't need the effects. Do want the EQ with the high, you know, the high shelf up and the boost up. <coughs> but anyway, oscillator one. It's going to be additive octaves. It's under basic additive octaves. Um, now this one should be right at around 12 o'clock in the position. And the intensity stays the same, the amp stays the same. However, you do change it from spectrum to bin minus. 
Now enable the second oscillator and change it to carbon that we used way in the beginning under analog electric. It's all the way at the bottom. And that is also bin minus not spectrum. And change the posi uh, position of carbon to about one o'clock. The intensity should be at about three o'clock. And the amp stays the same. And then enable the third oscillator and change that one to wicked, which we also used before. It's under digital hybrid, almost to the bottom. Now this one should also be um, spectrum, but you do change the position of the weight table to um, about 10 o'clock or so. And the intensity is about one o'clock. That should cover everything in the oscillators. Now when you go to the number five LFO, once again you enable sync and you change it to one two ratio but you do move the wavetable over to about right here. And once again, we're gonna automate these, so, and this automation is very, very small. Um, drag this to the first oscillator in the first position of the wavetable position, and drag it up, left click, drag up just slightly. And then as for the carbon, go to the number one envelope, and put it into the intensity section and right, uh, left click and hold down and drag down until the blue reaches it down. So it sounds kind of cool but something sounds a little weird so I'm going to go through and you could observe me and I'm going to try to adjust it to make it sound a little bit better. There we go. So the first thing I just did that really helped the sound is I adjusted the first instance of Massive out of the three growls we have. Um, and I adjusted it to be starting a little bit more at the bottom of Digi2 instead of higher up where we had it event originally. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's one thing I did miss is you, you need to take the uh, wicked down to negative 12. I totally forgot about that. Uh, that's roughly how I had it in the remake. I think I had it a little more polished, but it's kind of hard to just recreate something and have it exact, sound exactly the same without spending you know more specific time with it. Uh, but I'd say this is a really good starting point if you feel like you know going further with it. And again, if you feel like I went over the automations of the uh, wow filter too much, just try to remember how you want it to sound. I mean, if you look at how I have these notes here, it's one, two, then another one that's really long, then a short one and a long one. And that's exactly how I tried to set up the the you know the vowels changing. I started from one vowel to another and ended with this first note and same with the second note. And then I made it start off a lot higher but go for longer in the second note. You know what I mean? You gotta try to make the vowel changing go with how the notes are being plucked through. So uh, just think about that when you're trying to do this stuff. And if you don't even know what I'm talking about with the wow automation, then you must have just skipped the beginning of the video. And I would highly suggest going back to the beginning and watching that part. But that's the second growl. I'm going to cover the last growl now. It's not even really a growl. I would say it's more of a, it's the sound in Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites when it sounds like the synth's just being crunched up and thrown into a trash can. You know, it's, it just sounds like it's getting demolished or something. Um, so that's kind of the sound I was going for when I, when I did the recreation. And I, it was, it sounds pretty cool. It's not the same, but it, it does the same effect kind of. Um, so anyway, open a new instance of Massive. Uh, make sure you disable anything we don't need right now. 
and we'll go through and enable it if we do, obviously. But for now, I'm just going to turn everything off that I am not using. Okay, for oscillator one, you want to set it to wicked, the same oscillator we've been using for a lot of the other growls I've been showing you. It's under digital hybrid towards the bottom. And you want to set the wavetable position to about 1 o'clock. And you want to set the pitch of it to negative 3 because this sound isn't really designed to be on the same note. It's supposed to sound like it's just getting crunched up and nothing matters, you know what I mean? So the pitch and note aren't really quite as important with this one. Um, it, it's spectrum. It's not any other ones like the other uh, synths I've showed you. And intensity and amp stay the same. So that covers the first one. Now enable the second oscillator and set this to wicked as well. Um, except for this one, we're going to set the pitch, whoops, set the pitch to negative 15. And just to throw it off a little bit, I'll add 0 0.03, you know, just to kind of make it a little more off. <laughs> and then the wavetable table position needs to be about 1.30, 2 o'clock, something around there. Intensity stays the same, amp stays the same. Um, now for the modulation, we're not using the third oscillator by the way. Uh, for the modulation oscillator, you want to turn that on and turn this knob to about 2.30, almost 3 o'clock. And on ring modulation, uh, modulation, enable it for number 2. For the phaser, enable it for number, uh, number 2 as well. Oh, sorry, actually I'm not using that anymore. I don't know why I keep thinking that. Um, but yeah, for the phase should be enabled for number 2. And leave the phase alone, but ring mod should be turned up. Although we're not using that now, so forget about it. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, on filter 1, enable it. And go to scream. And put the cutoff all the way up. And change the scream knob to about like right before 3 o'clock or so. And then resonance should be all the way down. Or just a slight hair up. Now on effects 2, enable that, and let's turn on the phaser. I'm probably going to do phaser mono just because I, I don't like how the stereo effects kind of mess it up sometimes. And turn everything down just slightly. Uh, you can adjust it as you go. But it's better to start off lower, you know, and hear what the changes are. And then, of course, turn on the equalizer, and again, turn up the high shelf a little bit and the boost a little bit. Okay. Now go to the 5 LFO. And once again, we're going to change it to sync, and we're going to change it from 116 to 12. But we're going to move this over to the left more, or right, whichever way you look at it, to where the hump is in exactly the middle. And we're going to take what we just did with this LFO and assign it to the first oscillator in Wicked, and left click and drag it all the way down to the left. Now, on a number 8 LFO, it's the same as before. We're not messing with really anything. We're just moving down the rate a little bit. And click and drag that to the intensity on the first uh, oscillator. Left click and drag down a little bit, a little bit past uh, 3 o'clock. <coughs> and take number 5 LFO again and put it to the second oscillator. Left click, hold down, and drag all the way down. And that should cover the whole area there. Now, the note for this one I have pretty low. It's on, it's on the G2. And it already sounds kind of like uh, what the original sound was. It's a little bit too busy, though. So I'm going to adjust it. Seems like something is going too fast. Maybe it's this. Hmm. I know it sounds like really bad right now, but this is actually close to the sound. It's just it has to be done in the right context or it sounds really weird. <coughs> Something still doesn't seem right. I'm wondering what that is.
Yeah, that's actually pretty close. You have to think about it with in that slight moment, like when something drops and then you hear this, you know. It sounds like something's being crushed up and twisted around. But like I said, it's it's got to be in the right circumstance and environment, and it's not supposed to be on the right note or anything. It's supposed to sound just like, you know, some kind of angry monster or something. Uh, but of course, it can sound better with more editing and such. But this is actually what I started with and what I use. So uh, I hope that helps you. And that's it for the last one.